morning in the road show kitchen we couldn't be happier chef sam dooling is here from hunky dory and he's got his wave ready to go for a fun segment here on the road show this tuesday morning good morning sir good morning how you doing i am well great to see you uh this morning he will be preparing hunky dory stuffed clam fritters i love the sound of this yeah yeah, yeah. so it's kind of a take on a rhode island clam cake mixed with the stuffy outstanding so. who doesn't love that take us through the ingredients here they're all laid out so vibrantly i can't wait to see what you do yeah so there's a little bit of all-purpose flour some wandra flour um obviously baking powder to get that puff mm -hmm. um, a couple eggs buttermilk a little hot sauce and then um, there's red peppers onions celery um, a mix of herbs and then sausage and clams. Outstanding. It already smells so great and I, like I said, I can't wait to see what you do with this. Let's talk though for a moment about Hunky Dory, who you guys really are and what the people need to know. Yeah, so uh, we're opening up in Warren, Rhode Island at 40 Market Street. Um, we're definitely a comfort food inspired kind of restaurant, um, whether that be Southern or Northern or just any kind of approachable, easy to eat fun food. Right, and your association with one of our favorite places, Hope in Maine, as well. Yeah, Hope in Maine has been great. They're a wonderful resource for restaurants, not just us, but for everyone in Rhode Island. Um, they've got a lot of classes, and, and not just cooking classes, business classes, all, all of that. So Tremendous. Well, it's great to have you here. Yep. This is the man, you guys, Chef Sam Dooling from Hunky Dory, preparing, as he said, the Hunky Dory stuffed clam fritters, which you don't want to miss. Plus, we will learn even more and more all about his restaurant, everything you need to know throughout the morning. For now, back to you. Well, everything's Hunky Dory here in the Roadshow Kitchen this morning. That's who we're cooking with. It is a new spot to come. They haven't opened their doors just yet, but Chef Sam is hoping that they'll do so next month. Yeah. All yeah, right, shooting great. for mid-February. And you're in a wonderful location. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's uh, formerly Eli's Kitchen, mm -hmm. right there on Market Street, right in the heart of town. Um, easy to walk to, easily accessible, so yeah. Beautiful. And you have a nice treat for us here. A lot of times we think of the seafood in the summertime, but why not extend it um, a, a little further? And you got some great fritters that you're about to fry Yeah, up. so uh, essentially it's a mix between uh, a Rhode Island clam cake mm -hmm. and a stuffy. So, oh, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know, I love both things, so why not combine them and see yeah. how it goes? And it turned out great. So it doesn't always work out with two of your favorite things, right? But <laughs> no. in this case, it certainly does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're just frying them at mm -hmm. uh, 350. Okay. Um, if you have a candy thermometer, great. If not, you can temp it and then turn it low mm -hmm. um, and go from there. If you're cooking from home, you get a little bit of leeway. So. You know, um, I've mentioned, I, I heard those chefs mention uh, those candy thermometers before. Is that the one that you have hooked up to yeah, the so pot there? Yeah, it attaches to the pot okay. and stays in there and stays upright and reads temperature. Um, they're great. great. Um, they're super useful. And they can useful. handle maybe a little more heat. Is that what oh, it yeah. is rather uh -huh. than just your average yeah. thermometer? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. So we're frying these up and then I've got some plated here. Um, already done. How long did they have to fry for, would you Probably say? Probably three to four minutes. Oh, these are um, quick. Yeah, and you're just gonna like rotate them. Um, so now we'll finish it with a little comeback sauce, uh, espalette pepper, and what kind of pepper is that? Espalette. Um, it's a French pepper. It's pretty mild and, and kind of sweet, so mm. it's a nice finishing touch to to dishes. Wow, that's and then, uh, beautiful. That's the finished product. And tell us about that sauce. Maybe not give away every ingredient in case it's a secret. Does it have a little kick to it? A little yeah. spice. Um, so it's a sauce. It's actually from uh, Mississippi. Um, it's a uh, little mayo, hot sauce, vinegar, um, all the good stuff. And then it's put on everything in Mississippi. Um, mm -hmm. so and you were cooking down south before you came back up here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A few years ago. So is that what inspired this? The, those flavors in that comeback sauce? Yeah, I grew up with southern parents, southern grandparents. Mm -hmm. So southern food was just everywhere in my yeah. life growing up. Um, so yeah, I moved down south to South Carolina to work at Husk for a little while um, and to just kind of immerse myself in Southern cooking mm -hmm. and just learn even more about it. Um, so yeah, it was great. And I like that you're bringing a touch to a, a New England classic yeah, for us here. Exactly. I love, you can see that golden brown color coming on those fritters as we speak so you can tell how, just how quick these are gonna fry up for you at home. What sort of oil did you use? Um, just regular blended canola oil. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need anything special. I would not recommend using olive oil though because the smoke point's um, a lot lower on that and it'll burn a lot it'll quicker. Burn, okay. um, but any just you know blended canola oil will work. 
All right, great. Yeah. This looks fantastic. So tell us a little, little bit more about your place. Is this going to be a, a menu item that we can expect to see? Yeah. There? Um, so I definitely love like playful food, obviously. Yeah. Um, so just anything that I can source that is local. Mm -hmm. I'm very local driven. There's so many farms in Rhode Island and yes. I want to take advantage of that. Um, and so, seafood too. We're really yeah, fortunate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and with the pandemic, the farms are, are getting hurt just as hard as the restaurants. Um, mm, it's not spoken about as much, but any way we can support them supports our economy and it, and it just goes all the way through the line. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's definitely my wheelhouse is local, seasonal, um, and, a, and a rotating menu that'll you know just be constantly changing yeah. and, and reshaping itself. And we like to, su to, to hear that and to support that as well. I'm so glad you brought up that point about the local farms as mm -hmm. well because time and again we've had chef come in and mention, like you do, you like to support them and source locally and, and they're hurting just as much as well. So do all the more reason to go to these local spots that are then, you know, you're supporting the restaurants who then in turn support the farms. Exactly. It's a great point. Yeah, and there's a great network called Farm Fresh in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, for restaurants and for people at home as well, you mm -hmm. can get, uh, you know, there's a huge selection from local farms. Um, and if you can shop there, then I would. It, it would be greatly appreciated by everyone yeah. that's a farmer in this state. So. Well, we can't wait to check out Hunky Dory once you open your doors. Thank keep you. us posted. Let us know. Be on the lookout for them. They're in a great location, and you can find this recipe up on our website.